Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at the 1975 Wings album Venus and Mars. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I feel a bit guilty for placing it quite a way down the top 20 when I did my McCartney solo rankings. And uh, just want to clarify a few things about this album versus what I said on, on that video. Uh, first thing I have to say is this this is an important um, album from Paul, primarily because it was the launching pad to his hugely successful uh, European, Australian and US tours of 75, uh, 76. Um, the title track opened those concerts very effectively with Rock Show and several of the numbers on this album were successfully performed live. So that's the first thing good to say about this album. Uh, it was recorded in New Orleans and there were rumours that John was planning to join Paul uh, for some of the sessions but it didn't materialise because among other, th among other things John got back together with Yoko and uh, was too preoccupied with that to uh, have time to, to play with Paul which is a shame because I would have loved to have seen what would have happened if, if they'd got together then they at least were on friendly terms so that was good to see after all the, the bickering. Um, anyway I digress because that didn't happen. This album also saw the uh, the formation of the the best wings lineup Joe English on drums and Jimmy McCullough on guitar joining Paul Linder and Denny. Uh, in my opinion the strongest lineup. Jeff Britton the previous drummer does play on a few tracks from here but he didn't really fit in personality wise so they replaced him with Joe, was the right decision, and this album. So I'll, this is the, the cover, it's a nice cover, picture by Linda. People uh, speculated whether Venus and Mars meant, Paul, referred to Paul and Linda, but it didn't, apparently. Um, nice gatefold picture of the band in the desert, or in the, somewhere in the US, I think this was taken. Uh, lyrics on the back. I have to say, this isn't the strongest album lyrically. A bit like with Rudder of Speedway, you've got the lyrics for that, and the lyrics on that album weren't, weren't very good, good either. Lyrically, this album is, is it's not Paul's best, but melodically, it's really got his moment, its moments. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the packaging of the album. This is the inner sleeve, um, and the record is. Uh, on the capital label and it originally came with several goodies most of which I've lost over the years but one poster here the only surviving poster is uh, the band in uh, in New York. Um, I've lost the other poster which is annoying and there were a couple of stickers came with it. Um, me and Mr Mayo, you probably got all the extras so when you do a video of this one you can show them. <laughs> uh, one thing I'd also like to point out is this album was recorded in, uh, in New Orleans but it doesn't really have a New Orleans flavour at all. Uh, the only track which has a New Orleans flavour was a, a B-side which came out years later called My Carnival, um, which is just does sound like it was made in New Orleans, but this album really doesn't, which is kind of strange. Uh, I think a song like Take Me to the Mardi Gras from Paul Simon does sound like it was made in New Orleans, but actually wasn't. <laughs> but uh, that's just a little bit of info for you. The New Orleans flavor for me is not really, could have been recorded anywhere, actually. Uh, as I said on an earlier video, I did get into the live album Wings Over America before I heard this, so it was a bit strange coming to the studio album having already heard the live renditions. And in a couple of cases, I prefer the live ones, but as I go through them, you'll see in a couple of cases uh, the reverse is true. So the title track, Venus and Mars, very simple, gorgeous melody, and very short, but... Uh, that 
doesn't mean that it's bad. I mean, uh, the lovely Linda was short. <laughs> Look how good that was. Venus and Mars is a masterpiece, the song. Uh, then it goes into Rock Show, which on the album, I have to say, sounds a bit pedestrian compared to the live version. But uh, I can enjoy it. I can enjoy it. I, I just wish it rocked a bit harder, that's all. Um, Love in Song, which features Paul uh, playing, I think, the original bass, for, which Elvis used on Heartbreak Hotel. Decent, decent love song. Nothing wrong with it. You gave me the answer. Um, nice 20s nostalgia type piece. A bit like Honey Pie from the White Album. Marginally prefer the the live version, but this is this is a good version. I like this bit. I like the bit when he goes, shall we dance? This is fun. Um, so I like that. Magneto and Titanian Man. Um, not the strongest song on the album, but nice, nice song, fun words. Live version probably a little bit better, but not much in it. Um, Letting Go, Closing Side One. This was a single and unfortunately it didn't do very well, although it should have done because the riff, the guitar riff at the beginning is brilliant. Um, I prefer the live version, I have to be honest, I have to be honest. Then side two um, starts off with Venus and Mars reprise again. Very nice, nice words, same melody of course. Spirits of Ancient, ancient Egypt, uh, which Denny sings some of the lead on. Not bad. Um, not bad in, in the same way that famous groupies from London Town was not bad. It's not a standout track, but uh, it's not terrible either. Medicine Jar from Jimmy McCulloch. Uh, he wrote two songs for Wings. This is the better one of the two. Nice song. And uh, I like the album version and the live version of this. I can enjoy both. Call Me Back Again. Oof, uh, again, not. I, I think this album, this song has grown on me over the years. It's better now than uh, I remembered it. Um, a little bit repetitive, maybe, but nice vocal from Paul, and uh, it's okay. I can, I can defend this. Listen to what the man said. What a closer to the album. I mean, sorry, not not quite the closer. Nearly the closer. The big single, top five, I believe. Um, Beautiful summer day melody, uh, interesting words, uplifting song, uplifting song in the, in the same way as Paul, a lot of Paul's best work is, with a little luck, for example. Um, Treat her gently, the ballad at the end. At the end, uh, nice tune. Uh, quite like it. Lonely old people. It's okay. It's it's. He's done better ballads. He's done better ballads. These are the words on the back, by the way. So, the album finishes with the Crossroads theme. The Cross Crossroads was a soap opera in England at the time, very popular. I used to watch it actually, and uh, they did a nice nice version of a, of the tune from by Tony Hatch, and it was used by ITV for a while. Uh, Paul got a lot of criticism for doing that, but you know, it was a good sense, bit of sense of humour at the end of the album. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. And then the album finishes with, I think, Jimmy McCulloch, Jimmy McCulloch saying, well, that's basically it. And that's the end of the album. So, it's mixed, but it's Paul, confidence high, Melodically strong, lyrically not too strong, but as I said, the launching pad for one of the best world tours, well, the world, the best world tour from a from a solo Beatle, because he's the only solo Beatle who's done a world tour, but um, the one of the best world tours by by any band ever. I'll say that. So I'm going to revisit this album and, and give it uh, an eight and a half out of ten. How's that? So, thank you for watching and see you next time.